Mountain Watershed Association was formed in 1994 in response to a deep mine proposal in the Indian Creek watershed. After the proposal was defeated, citizens joined together to form the organization dedicated to cleaning up contaminated water and dangerous sites from years of poor mining practices in the watershed. Mountain Watershed was originally focused on Indian Creek and in 2003 partnered with the global nonprofit Water Keeper Alliance to add the Yakagini River Keeper program. And this has since expanded the organization's vision into the larger Yak River watershed. Currently, MWA is dedicated to the preservation, protection, and conservation of the entire Yak watershed. Our efforts have included remediation of numerous AMD sites, increasing community awareness about environmental issues, promoting cooperative community efforts, encouraging sound environmental practices, and supporting sustainable economies. Mountain Watershed is proud of the positive impacts we have been a part of and have completed a variety of environmental projects including abandoned mine treatment systems, stream bank stabilization projects, the Indian Creek Valley Trail, extensive water quality monitoring, and rare threat and endangered species surveys. These projects have drastically improved the water quality, quality of life, and recreational opportunities within the watershed. Underground coal mining began in the Indian Creek Valley in the mid-19th century and continues today. Many of these mines were developed on the middle containing coal seam, known locally as the Miller B coal. With few exceptions, underground mines were developed up dip to facilitate drainage, a practice that resulted in mines discharging toxic water into local streams and waterways. Impacts from abandoned mine lands were prevalent early on during the development of the mines and have continued through to today. As we leave our office parking lot, turn left on Route 711, we enter the village of Millcroft, Pennsylvania, named after the now abandoned mining operations. And here on the left is our Millcroft treatment system. Welcome to the Millcroft treatment system. This is just one of the several mine drainage treatment systems that we have here in the Indian Creek watershed. This area is known as the Millcroft treatment system. It collects and treats two discharges, one from the Melcroft No. 3 mine workings and the other from the Melcroft No. 1 mine. The two different discharges enter the treatment system and flow into the collection pond. The main discharge is from Melcroft No. 3 and enters the treatment system near the roadside parking area. This discharge has an average flow of 500 to 600 gallons per minute and a pH of 6.1. It has approximately 2 mg per liter of aluminum, 76 mg per liter of iron, and 5 mg per liter of manganese. The second discharge comes from the Melcroft No. 1 mine and is piped under Champion Creek. This discharge adds around 43 gallons per minute and a pH of 3.2. It also has higher aluminum at 8 mg per liter, and iron at 64 mg per liter, and 1 mg per liter of manganese. Currently, the collection pond is in need of some maintenance. The styrofoam from the flow baffles has deteriorated and continues to clog the inlet to one of the vertical flow ponds. The two vertical flow ponds work in parallel and the water is distributed between the ponds. Each pond treats half of the discharge. The limestone rock interacts with the discharge, causing the pH level to rise, and metals that were in solution to begin to form a solid and precipitate out of solution. The vertical flow ponds are constructed with a limestone layer and an organic layer of compost. The majority of the treatment is occurring at this phase. Treatment continues as the water flows through several more ponds and back into Champion Creek. Prior to 2009, 
the mine void created by the abandoned Melcroft mine workings was full of water, to the extent that contaminated water was seeping out of the hillsides, into the basements of homes, and flowing untreated into Indian Creek. The Melcroft treatment system was constructed between 2009 and 2011. The mine pool that created the portal pond in the village of Melcroft was completely full and not being drawn down and dewatered. The discharge would push laterally, looking for an escape route. The path of least resistance was often into the basements of residents. By constructing the Melcroft system, the water in the mine voids was rerouted to the treatment systems, alleviating some of the problems. The cost of installation of the Melcroft treatment system was over $1.1 million, and we estimate that the operation and maintenance costs exceed $23,000 annually. Some of the maintenance activities at the site include vegetation control, bi-monthly flushing, quarterly water sampling, and biannual macroinvertebrate sampling to monitor the effectiveness of our system. This project is unique in that a half-mile community walking trail was established around the treatment ponds and is open to the public. The path is now connected to the Indian Creek Valley Trail via the old railroad trestle that was restored. Here is an aerial view of the Melcroft treatment system. There on the left is where the Melcroft number three discharge comes into the collection pond. And as we work our way down, water is flowing into that left vertical flow pond, but not the one on the right. And from there it continues to the other ponds. The last one containing some wetland plants. And if you notice the trail system that goes around the entire treatment system, it's not only open to walkers, but is in use by the Indian Creek Valley ATV Club as well. And they have their operations down to the western end of the treatment system. As we leave our Melcroft treatment system, we drive by several old homes that were present during the mining operations and we head south on 7-Eleven. Before long, we get to our kelp discharge access point. And just a reminder, these areas are not open to the general public, but if you would like to tour any of, the, of our treatment systems, uh, we'll be happy to set that up. The second stop on our journey is the Anna and Steve Godoski Mine Drainage Remediation Project, also known as the Kelp Discharge. This discharge is the largest discharge in the Indian Creek watershed. This discharge is about 184 million gallons of mine drainage into Indian Creek and about 38.5 tons of acid. This treatment system, being one of our older treatment systems, definitely shows that mine drainage treatment systems don't last forever, as this system is in dire need of some repairs. We have up here our upflow vertical bed. Um, right now the water levels are too high. We actually have a uh, spill coming in to the treatment system because the pores in the vertical pond or the pipes are clogged and so the water had to find its own way into the system. From here it goes into our first settling basin. It goes through the baffles giving it a little bit of retention time before going into the two vertical wetlands and again just like a Melcroft they work in parallel meaning that part of the water goes into each of the ponds and then below that is a final settling basin where the water again gets that last chance for the iron and aluminum to precipitate out before discharging into a channel that leads us back over to Indian Creek. Prior to construction, approximately 184 million gallons of mine water were discharged annually into Indian Creek from the kelp discharge. The mine water came from the abandoned Melcroft No. 1 underground mine. This discharge deposited 38 and a half tons of iron into Indian Creek every year. It was responsible for 40% of the acid load and 30% of the iron load for the entire Indian Creek watershed. Construction began in 2004 and for the first time in Pennsylvania, horizontal directional drilling was used for creating inseam boreholes. 
These boreholes were drilled perpendicular to the coal outcrop in order to capture the mine water. Valves were installed to adjust flow. Approximately 30 feet of the mine pool was gradually drawn down, which eliminated the discharge coming out of the Melcroft No. 1 mine opening. This allowed for the collection of mine water at a lower elevation, facilitating dewatering of numerous seeps and smaller discharges along Route 711. The collection system is necessary to relocate the original discharge to an alternative location for passive treatment. The kelp discharge is captured in a water control structure and then piped 1,600 feet to the treatment area. The successive alkalinity producing system utilizes alkalinity from limestone to neutralize the acid in the water, which raises the pH. The water is collected and directed into upflow wetland number one, where it passes through a limestone sediment basin and then diverted through a series of baffles in the settling pond. This is designed to help precipitate additional metals out. The discharge then flows into two vertical flow wetlands, working in parallel, just like the Melcroft system. This allows the remaining iron and aluminum to precipitate and settle out. The treated water flows through the wetlands to the polishing pond, where additional metals precipitate out before the water is released back into Indian Creek. In 2012, a design flaw was discovered when the treatment system became clogged. During the initial drilling, only the first 60 feet of the boreholes were cased. The uncased portions collapsed, which restricted the flow of water into the treatment system. This caused the mine pool to back up and discharge through the original Melcroft No. 1 mine opening. Early in 2013, the project site was declared an emergency by the Pennsylvania Department of Environmental Protection. The inseam borehole was redrilled and stainless steel casing was installed all the way into the mine pool. The mine pool was again dewatered to an elevation at which the treatment system could function properly. Following the successful dewatering, the upflow bed, the vertical flow ponds, and the final settling basin were remediated in 2015 thanks to a growing greener grant. That wraps up the tour of our kelp treatment system. And as we head farther south on Route 711 towards Indian Head, Pennsylvania, We'll soon get to our Sagamore treatment access area, and this is an agreement with the local landowner to allow us to go over their bridge, which is over Indian Creek, and gets us to Indian Creek Valley Trail. This next system is located right along the Indian Creek Valley Trail, and you'll see some infrastructure and some clean out pipes along the trail if you do bike or hike along there. The third stop on our journey is the Sagamore Mine Drainage Treatment System. This was the first treatment system that Mountain Watershed Association established back in 2001. The Sagamore Treatment System is also known as the Max B. Noble Mine Drainage Remediation Project in honor of the Noble family's perpetual easement for use of the land for the treatment system. The Sagamore System collects two abandoned mine discharges and utilizes a unique operation feature to treat the water before flowing back into Indian Creek. The Big Chief Mine was owned and operated by the Sagamore Coal Company, and due to the close proximity of the Indian Creek Valley Trail and Indian Creek, the only feasible site for the treatment system was along the banks of Indian Creek. This location was previously used by the coal company as a refuse pile. A total of 70,000 cubic yards of refuse were on site and were ultimately incorporated into the project during reclamation and relocation. Construction started on the system in September of 1999 and completed in March of 2001. There are two catch basins located to the north and south of the ponds where the two discharges are collected. One is alkaline while the other is acidic. They are then piped into the first pond where they actually treat each other. A windmill is utilized to power aerator pumps. These were installed to increase oxygen levels, which help to remove the iron and acid from the water. 
the mine water leaves the first basin with a pH of 6.2 to 6.8 and enters the second basin where the iron is given additional time to settle out before the system discharges into Indian Creek. Water flowing back into Indian Creek has a pH of 6.5 to 6.9. The Sagamore treatment system costs $358,000 to construct, and the majority of the funding for this project came from grassroots fundraising within the community. We estimate that the annual operation and maintenance cost for the system is around $12,000. Maintenance tasks include annual pipe cleaning, vegetation control, quarterly water sampling, and biannual macroinvertebrate surveys. All right, on to our next system. Careful as you're pulling out onto Route 711. Lots of vehicle and truck traffic. And we pass through Indian Head, Pennsylvania and are making our way towards our Galentine treatment system. This system is located at the convergence of Poplar Run and Indian Creek. Our fourth stop on our journey is the Galentine Abandoned Mine Drainage Treatment System. This system was actually recently rehabilitated um, because when they originally built the treatment system, they didn't install any cleanouts. So it's very important to have cleanouts in your treatment system um, so that you can clean the pipes. The discharge enters the treatment system via perforated pipes beneath a bed of limestone in the up vertical flow pond in order to increase alkalinity. The iron is preserved in the ferrous form in an effort to prevent it from contacting oxygen so that it does not coat the limestone clogging the system. From there, it flows into the first settling basin where the metals begin to precipitate out as it passes through limestone baffles, which again increase alkalinity. The discharge then enters the vertical downflow pond where it flows through compost into another limestone bed before discharging into a second settling pond. Additional metals deposit into the settling basin before it exits through the natural wetlands and into Indian Creek. The flow rate of the Galantine discharge varies between 20 and 200 gallons per minute from a nearby abandoned mine. Acid levels range from 124 to 195 milligrams per liter, while iron is constant at 74 milligrams per liter and aluminum ranges between 7 and 11 milligrams per liter. Prior to construction, the Galantine treatment system had to be modified and the proposed site was relocated. The change in design raised the mine pool and discharge elevation so that adequate space for treatment could be utilized. The initial installation cost of the system in 2003 was approximately $180,000. Shortly after construction was completed, the system clogged, causing a blowout upstream, which resulted in the system failing to treat the discharge. It was redesigned and reconstructed in 2008 in the same location, but with a $585,000 price tag. All right, now we're going to drive up the Poplar Run watershed, and we are working currently on a couple projects in the Poplar Run watershed. One of them is where we're heading now, just a quick stop. It's called the Rondell Coriel Treatment System. And this discharge is basically the headwaters of Neymar Run. And because of the amount of metals, the pH, the entire stretch of Neymar Run uh, is, is impaired, as well as when it converges with Poplar Run. Upstream of the convergence, Poplar Run is a very nice fishery. There's large brook trout, and we completed a fish shocking survey there, and it contained one of the largest native uh, brook trout that the biologist had ever caught. And we're about up to the headwaters of Neymar Run, and you'll be seeing our pilot project here on the left. The final stop today on our journey is the Rondell Coriel treatment system. Here we are in the headwaters of Newmire Run 
which is a tributary to Poplar Run, which is a tributary of Indian Creek. Um, this site is our newest treatment system, and it is also an active treatment system. But due to confidentiality ag agreements, so we can't say a whole lot about what's going on. We are working with Cosmos Technologies out of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania um, to develop this treatment system. And there is another talk during this conference about the Rondell treatment system, and we hope you can join us. The Rondell Coriel Discharge, located in Salt Lake Township, Fayette County, Pennsylvania, is the headwaters of Neymar Run. It is a tributary of Pawthor Run and is located within the Indian Creek watershed. The discharge is from the former Rondell Strip Mine that mined the Middle Catanning and Brookville Clarion coal seams. It exhibits the most degraded water quality in the Indian Creek watershed, discharging anywhere between 4 to 60 gallons per minute of highly acidic water with a pH of around 2.8 and high levels of aluminum, iron, and manganese at 60, 40, and 40 milligrams per liter, respectively. Thanks for joining us. We hope you enjoyed the short tour of some of our treatment systems. And we're always looking for more organizations and other agencies to partner with. So feel free to reach out to us and you can reach us through our website at mtwatershed.com.